Hi friends, let's discuss some strategies for better text to SQL or querying databases in natural language. Now the first one is called the dialect. We know different databases have slightly different syntax or commands, right? Langchain, it automatically detects uh, the most common databases like MS SQL, uh, um, MySQL, Postgres, uh, SQLite, etc. Okay, let's see two examples. So here we are loading this Chinook database, uh, which is about uh, the music albums, artists, uh, the customers, etc. Uh, from a SQLite. Okay, so we use this SQL database connector to connect to the database. Uh, this is hosted online and as you can see from here the dialect SQLite is automatically detected. Uh, here we are just printing the uh, tables from the column and some uh, top few rows. Okay, So the important one is uh, the SQL database connector it automatically detect uh, this as a SQLite database. Now here I have hosted the same data in my Postgres database, uh, the same 11 tables are in the same database. Now let's connect to my local host, uh, which is this Postgres. Okay. So my database URI, and then now we connect to the local database, and this time uh, the dialect is detected as Postgres SQL. So if you are using one of these databases, uh, the Langchain uh, can work fine, but if you are using uh, some other database, do make sure that you mention your database uh, uh, dialect in the prompt. Okay. And then now, as you know, the prompt is very important for LLMs, uh, the, especially the system prompt, how they should behave. Right. Now, let's create a SQL query chain and which require two parameters. One is the LLM itself. Here we are using uh, the OpenAI LLM. And then here we have the database connector. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, the database connector, through database connector, the Langchain can detect the dialect of the database. And here we have some uh, helper functions. For example, this get prompts. Okay. So here is the prompt the default prompt used by the Langchain. Since this is SQLite database, uh, here it says, okay, you are a SQLite uh, expert and given an input question, you first generate syntactically correct SQL query and then run the query. And once you get the response, uh, turn that into human readable uh, format, uh, again using LLM, okay? So we start with the question here and it will generate a SQL query and it run the query and get the result and it transform the results into a human readable format. Okay, so these are the steps it's supposed to do. And then here we have some safe uh, uh, safety statements or boundary checks uh, kind of things. Uh, unless the user ask, uh, we don't want to return the full uh, database tables because that would be too expensive, uh, both in terms of cost and price. So by default, uh, we are setting, okay, it should return only the top five uh, results. Um, and then uh, again, uh, just only query the columns uh, which are required for the query, which are required uh, for the for answering the question. And then uh, if it's a timestamp uh, based data, uh, more often not than not the users query the latest data or the data on a particular day, so on and so forth, right? So if the user is asking for today's data, then use this date function uh, from uh, date function. Okay. All right. So that's the default prompt. Okay. And then, uh, right. So this is for uh, SQLite database. And when we run the query on my local Postgres database, as you can see here, that Postgres uh, is automatically detected. Uh, uh, the rest of the prompt remain pretty much the same. Okay. Now, the LLMs, they can understand the user query and they can generate uh, the SQL statement. But 
they don't know our table schema right what tables we have and uh, how we define the columns uh, etc then only they can generate syntactically correct sql which can be run on the database right so we need to provide the database schema also to the llm as context okay so in this context it's more like a system prompt how the input and output should look like we haven't yet specified our database schema all right so again the database connector has some really handful fun handy functions for example get context uh, it get uh, two sets of information uh, as you can see the context uh, it contain this table info and the table names of course the table names are also in table info but if we want to quickly get the table names we use the table names and here are the 11 uh, tables so these are about uh, the albums uh, the artist the genre type and some are about uh, this invoice invoice line and the uh, i believe there is a customer as well yeah there is a customer also so there are two pieces of information one about the music albums itself and the second one uh, more of this business are in billing type of information and then the table info uh, which is the more important one contain all the table schema so here we have the album table uh, the album id title so on and so forth and then by default uh, the top are some three uh, rows okay so this information through this information the llm able to generate syntactically correct uh, sql uh, as per our database schema which is the database tables as well as uh, the column names now so earlier we saw using get prompts we can get the default prompt okay and we need to append the table schema to the prompt right so we can use this uh, uh, a command to concatenate the prompt with the schema so here we have the schema up to this point and then here we have used the following tables okay here we have the table schemas for all our uh, 11 tables now as you can see every time the user run a query we are providing all this information as context this is quite huge right we have all 11 tables uh, which is uh, really small to medium if you if we are looking at enterprise tables which might have hundreds of tables with each table containing hundreds of columns uh, we wouldn't be able to fit all the context uh, into the prompt but even if we are able to do even for simple queries the llm need to process all the context uh, uh, to understand uh, uh, it right uh, which is very inefficient both in terms of uh, time as well as cost uh, in a follow up video we'll see uh, uh, how we can reduce uh, the length of the uh, schema or the context okay now all right um, the third uh, strategy is uh, we know LLMs works uh, well when we provide them a few examples, right? So next we are going to do this few shot uh, prompt. So here we have created some examples uh, which have the input, which is the user query and then uh, the SQL statement, okay? Corresponding to the user query, okay? So we have this input query pairs uh, in this example. And then here is our uh, example prompt schema which is simply the user input and the query so schema for this a few short examples and then here we create the prompt with this template few short prompt template so we are providing some five examples in this schema and then the rest uh, is the uh, the regular prompt okay which takes this user input uh, which is the query and then if we want to specify how many top k documents we can do that uh, as a variable and this table info contains the uh, a table schema okay so let's create the full prompt so here is our question how many artists are there uh, we want top three documents and table info this is supposed to be table schema but this question is too basic that we are not even providing any table schema but as you can see from one of the examples 
uh, select star from artist, right? So it knows that there is a table called artist. Now, in order to answer this question, how many artists are there? All it requires is do the count star uh, from artist table, right? So it doesn't need to know the full schema. And anyway, this is for demo purpose. So we are not providing the table schema, okay? Instead, uh, just some a dummy variable. All right, so this is our uh, prompt, uh, which include uh, this few short examples, which contains these five examples, okay? Now, as we discussed, the databases can be quite large with lots of information, right? Uh, they not only, for example, in this case, this database, it contains information about the music, the albums, genre, etc., and also the billing one. Now, we might have a set of users, uh, the business analyst, who might be asking questions only related to uh, the billing. Whereas we might have uh, some other users uh, who who are asking questions about uh, the artist albums, etc. Right? So, but the five examples we are providing as a few short examples, these are just select fixed examples from the top five, right? So, if we are able to select the more relevant examples at the time of querying and provide them as a context, then the LLM gives much better results, okay? So, we want a mechanism by which we can dynamically select which of all these queries are more appropriate to the query the user is asking, okay? So, that way we can significantly improve the performance of the LLMs, okay? So, now let's see how we can do this dynamic few shot uh, prompting, okay? Essentially, what we are going to do is, we are going to build a semantic similar search engine, okay? So, we take all these examples, we create embeddings for each example, we put them in a vector store. And then when the user asks a question, we search for top five semantically similar uh, queries are the inputs and we take those examples as few short examples and provide them to the LLM at the time of uh, running the query, okay? All right. So for vector database, we are using this Facebook uh, files library and then we have semantic uh, similar search example selector, open AI embeddings, okay? So here we are creating this example selector, okay? which takes all our examples. Now, these examples can be several thousands. So, once we build this system and uh, put it into use, as the user asks the questions and if they get the correct response, they might give this thumbs up or thumbs down and we collect all the right examples, all the correct examples over time and we keep adding them to our uh, uh, this a few short examples repository, okay? So this can grow over time. It can even be several thousands of queries to cater for uh, the needs of different ideas, okay? So we have all of our examples, uh, the embeddings, the vector store, and by default, we want to retrieve the top five semantically similar queries. And here is the user query uh, uh, in the form of input variable, okay? So we take this example selector and we want to select some examples let's say for this query, okay? So here we got five examples which are most semantically similar to this query within our database, within the database we have, okay? All right. Okay, now let's uh, redo the prompt. Yeah, we have the example selector. Now when we do the prompt, this time we will use this example selector instead of the fixed five examples we have here. So instead of these examples, now we have example selector, okay? We have example selector and then each example schema, uh, uh, the SQL prompt, sorry, the LLM prompt and the input variables, okay? Again, we are asking the same very basic question. And this time, as you can see, along with the prompt, we have the top five dynamically selected and semantically similar examples to our user query, okay? All right, and then to run the query, all we need to do is create a SQL query engine, 
and provide the LLM connection to the database and the prompt which include what the LLM should do, the dynamic few shot examples as well as uh, the table schema. Okay. Again, this is a two basic query and all we are doing is this count artist. Okay. So to quickly summarize uh, the three strategies we discussed. The first one is dialect. Uh, Langchain already can detect uh, some of the databases and uh, uh, update uh, the default prompt. Okay. But if you are using a database which is not here, make sure you update the default prompt. And the second one, uh, using couple of handy functions, uh, we are able to extract uh, the default prompt as well as uh, the table schema uh, using this get context and then uh, we can append them together uh, the default prompt with the table schema and if needed uh, you can obviously make some changes to the prompt and the final one uh, the few shot example and the dynamic uh, uh, examples right so with the few shot examples we give a fixed set of examples each time the user run the query whereas with the dynamic uh, uh, prompting we select the most appropriate uh, examples uh, relevant to the user query that way we can significantly improve the performance uh, of the uh, system okay uh, that's all for this video thank you very much